What's up, guys? Brett Appley here from DailyFanMMA.com, back with another UFC quick picks for you on the Mayo Media Network. Of course, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, like the video, comment below who your favorite play is on the DraftKings slate this week. Great content coming out throughout the week on a lot of different sports, too. Of course, we got the Dogger Pass podcast with Paul Shaughnessy and Cody Saftik. Uh, Mad Lab's doing his main event breakdown as well, and we're doing the quick picks. Got a cash game play for you, a tournament play, salary play, and my fade of the week. Coming off a, a decent week last week, I believe. Unfortunately, Cody Stamen, uh, our cash play, that, that fight was canceled. Fingers crossed we don't get any more cancellations this week. Tournament play was... Um, Mike Rodriguez, he did not come through. Salary play was Ode Osborne, who won by knockout in like 30 seconds. And our fate of the week, Yusuf Zalal lost. So that was a, a big win for us here. Um, and going to give you uh, four more plays for UFC 258, which is on Saturday. Kamara Usman versus Gilbert Burns. Big, big slate, big pay per view. And we'll start off with my cash game play of the week, which is Kamara Usman at 9k all right with a lot of big favorites have been losing recently and in 2021 i'm trying to look for safety with my cash game play and it's hard to overlook kamaro uzman at 9k this week as the main event favorite minus 275 against gilbert burns who is plus 235 as the underdog i know there are people on gilbert burns i personally think this is a good matchup for kamaro uzman and more importantly i think he's a fairly safe option on this slate with a ton of upside as well. Usman is just, I consider him one of the best fighters in the UFC today. And in terms of a matchup against Gilbert Burns, yes, Gilbert Burns is a fantastic submission grappler, but he's not going to, going to be earning much top position in this fight. I don't think Kamara Usman lands 3.38 takedowns per 15 minutes. He has never been taken down himself. When Usman wants to take Gilbert Burns down, he will. When he does not, he will probably just control him against the cage. And even if this fight plays out at range, uh, Usman, I think, is a superior technical striker to Gilbert Burns. Burns brings some of that wild energy, that aggression, that maybe he can catch Usman. But over 25 minutes... I do think Usman is a superior striker and will come out with the victory. Usman lands 4.5 significant strikes per minute, only absorbs 2.23. People are making way too much of Burns' performance against Tyron Woodley. He landed 83 significant strikes and attempted 138 strikes over 25 minutes. That is just, those numbers are not very high. If you compare that to Usman's victory over Colby Covington, which took place on the feet, Usman landed 175 significant strikes, more than double, and he attempted 300. 60 significant strikes over the course of 25 minutes, and that doesn't even include his wrestling potential here. And if you look at DraftKings, Usman at 9K has absolutely smashed. He has scored 130 points or more in each of his last four fights, which is absolutely insane. Three of those came by decision. He gets 17, 18 minutes of control time in nearly all his matchups outside of the Covington fight, which he still put up 130 points. He just has so many ways to score with this new system. Um, and as a big favorite here, minus 275, not even expecting him to win inside the distance, but that's a possibility as well. The bottom line is at 9K, Usman is the one of the safest fighters on the slate with a extremely high ceiling in a good matchup in a 25 minute main event kamara uzman is my favorite cash game play of the week at 9k moving on to the tournament play of the week it's going to be hadolfo Vieira at 9.3 k um Vieira is one of the best submission grapplers in the sport today, I think, and he's going to have a massive advantage in that department against against Anthony Hernandez. That's why he's priced up so highly. He's minus 400 to win. And more importantly, he is minus 240 to win inside the distance, which is a crazy number. He's also plus 105 to win in round one. And there are some concerns with Vieira. You know, he's a relatively new fighter to the sport of MMA. He's one of the best sports submission grapplers of all time, but he doesn't have an extensive MMA career. There are some questions with his striking. There are some questions with his wrestling, with his cardio. I think there will be a day where Adolfo Vieira loses. I just think this is a very tough matchup for Anthony Hernandez because Hernandez, 
isn't a high level submission grappler. Hernandez isn't a great wrestler. Hernandez isn't a, a very dangerous striker. A lot of his fights are kind of recklessly charging into the clinch, into the pocket. He has a lot of guillotine victories. And if he's fighting in close space with Vieira, I just don't think he's going to win those exchanges. That's going to give Vieira opportunities to land takedowns. And if Vieira gets on top of you, he's going to take your back. He's going to strangle you. He's going to dominate on the mat. He's fought twice in the UFC thus far. He scored 106 points in each of his two victories. And I think that's a fair estimate of what he can put up against Vieira on Saturday. Um, there are a lot of decent high upside fighters on this slate, but it's hard to overlook the grappling, wrestling, control, submission potential of Vieira, even at 9.3K. Again, minus 400 to win, minus 240 inside the distance. There's a very, very strong chance Vieira wins this fight inside the distance with a grappling-based skill set. That scores highly on DraftKings. He has a... Um, very strong chance to score more than 100 points in a win. When I have the ability to pay up, Vieira is among, if not my favorite tournament plays on this entire slate, 9.3K. There you go. Moving on to my salary play of the week. It's going to be Jillian Robertson at 7.7K. Um, this is a tough one. This is I, I project Robertson close to evens here, and mostly because I don't quite know how strong Miranda Maverick is as a defensive wrestler. She's a, a very young prospect, a physical fighter, and she might just be stronger than Robertson, and she might be able to defend takedowns. But what I really like about Robertson in this fight and, and in her style in general is that she knows what she has to do. She has to get the fight to the ground, and she has to win grappling exchanges. She's not going to mess around on the feet. So when Robertson wins, we see her landing a high number of takedowns, dominating on the mat, racking up control, and generally winning by submission. And from a DraftKings perspective, Robertson scores in her victories 94, 92, 110, 106, 97, and 98. And at least one of those have come by decision. And at 7.7K, she's already a bit of a value at plus 115 to win. Plus 330 inside the distance is not great, but 7.7K plus 115 to win in a, a fight that we know she is going to have to grapple to win. And so there are other fighters in this range I like too. For example, you know, I think Andre Ewell's got a path to victory. Vian, there's a lot of fighters. vian has got a path to victory. Pitolo's got a path to victory. But I feel much more confident about the ceiling of Jillian Robertson. When Robertson wins, I think she has a much better chance to end up on the optimal lineup than a lot of other fighters in this range. And even if she is truly, truly the underdog in this fight, even if she is truly plus 115, I'm still willing to take the chance on her that she can win in this matchup on Saturday night at 7.7K. For the upside, Jillian Robertson is going to be my salary play this week. All right, moving on to the fade of the week. For me, it's going to be Kelvin Gastelum at 8.8K. He's taking on Ian Heinish, and he's a minus 230 favorite, but I just don't feel comfortable in where Gastelum is at right now, and especially from a fantasy perspective, I don't feel confident that he can end up on the optimal lineup, and that's really the goal with the fade, right? Not necessarily fighter has to lose. I just don't want them to sniff winning lineups in any format, and at 8.8K, I just don't think Gaslam has many options. I don't think he's going to land 100 significant strikes, but even if he did 100 significant strikes in this new format, that's not even going to score 80 points, for example. I don't project him to land many takedowns. Maybe he mixes in one, but he only averages you know, 0 0.87 takedowns per 15 minutes. He's not a, a high producer of offense. And so in his victories, you know, 63 points. He uh, And that was... That was actually against Jacare Souza, in which he landed a knockdown and still only scored 63 points in a decision win. And at 8.8K, we've already talked about Usman. We've already talked about Hadolfo Vieira. There's other fighters in this range who I like as well. Ricky Simone, Bilal Muhammad, etc. I think Gaslam needs a big score. And unless he can knock 
Heinish out, I don't see him ending up on the optimal lineup. And it probably has to be an early knockout as well. Gaslam is plus 315 inside the distance. That's not a good number. Heinish has shown a lot of durability throughout his career. He's never been knocked down. Um, I think he's tough enough to make this fight competitive and just kind of kill off the value at Gastelum. So at 8.8K, Gastelum is going to be my fate of the week. You won't see him on any of my tournament lineups this week. And I don't mind a little dip on Heinish at 7.4K on their verse end, hoping he can come out with a close decision. And that's going to do it, guys, for another episode of the UFC Quick Picks. Thank you again so much for the support. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment below who your favorite play is on the DraftKings slate. Make sure you come over to dailyfanmma.com. Check out breakdowns for every fight on the slate, rankings, projections. We got an hour podcast up, opening up a Discord channel this week as well for the public, um, and a lot, a lot more. So thank you for the support. Best of luck this week. Stay safe. Talk to you soon. Peace. Thank you.